A storm is brewing in an affluent Auckland suburb where residents are battling to stop the government building an Erebus memorial in a local park. It's been 40 years since Air New Zealand Flight 901 crashed into the side of the Antarctic mountain, killing all 257 on board. And some families of the dead are dismayed that there is still no memorial. Many are saddened that protests from the Parnell Park's neighbours have caused further delays, with some calling them NIMBYs who need to get a life. Susan Strongman reports. From under the boughs of a majestic Pahutakawa tree, a grassy lawn gently slopes towards the Waitamata Harbour. This is the spot in Dovemire Robinson Park, better known as the Parnell Rose Gardens, for which an Erebus memorial is planned. But the project has been delayed due to objections from neighbours who say the large structure is not suitable. A campaign to save the park is spearheaded by residents Anne Coney and Joe Malcolm who say the memorial would ruin the happy vibe of the green space. I can understand why someone might want to put a memorial in a place that's as beautiful as this, but memorials are sad. And this is a really sad memorial. I mean, 257 people. And I think absolutely a memorial is not the wrong thing to do. It's our only objection is the site. The site is not the most appropriate site for a national memorial. Malcolm says her husband, whose father died in the crash, supports her views. The monument, called Te Paerangi Ata Ata, Sky Song, features a large cantilevered concrete pathway rising northeast towards the harbour, flanked by high walls featuring 257 individual snowflakes and the names of the dead. Catherine Carter, whose father, pilot Jim Collins, died in the crash, was one of the family members involved in selecting the design. The idea behind the the concept of the design relates to the sky or journey into the sky, which is quite specific to um, the Erebus accident because all the people on board the aircraft were, including the cockpit crew and all the passengers, were really looking forward to the journey to the ice because it was something that was unique and special. Ms Carter and other Erebus family members were looking forward to a sod-turning ceremony next week on the 40th anniversary of the tragedy. But neighbours' protests delayed landowner approval and the sod turning plans have been cancelled. Delays are always um, disappointing in, in, in this regard, I think. it's um, You hope for a resolution, you hope for something to happen that will be, that will be a gathering place for, for families affected by Erebus and it's just the goalposts shifted again and... That's hard. John Stewart was 34 when his aunt, Dawn Matthews, died in the crash. He's now 74 and says 40 years is an inexcusably long time to wait for a memorial. I think if the memorial had been gone ahead with in its current form and position, when things were still relatively fresh in the public mind, I don't think you'd have this nimbyism that's happening in Parnell with the locals. Nimbyism, not in my backyard. John Stewart worries he won't be around to see the Erebus Memorial completed. But Parnell resident Anne Coney denies accusations of nimbyism. Well, I don't think it's about being a NIMBY. It's that it just doesn't, it's way too big for this small park. And if, if, if it's someplace else with more space around it, well, that's fine. But if they want a memorial here, please could it be in keeping with the small Edwardian area? And that's fine, most welcome. But for a, a thing that looks like an on-ramp to the third Harbour Bridge crossing, please put it in a larger space. Anne Coney and Joe Malcolm have lobbied against the memorial, setting up a Facebook page, a petition, engaging lawyers and even threatening to protest the now cancelled sod turning. Consequently, the Waitamata local board, which owns the land, has delayed its decision and has opened public consultation on the memorial. Parnell resident and historian Rendell McIntosh believes an initial lack of consultation is what's bugged locals, 
rather than a severe case of nimbyism. No, I honestly believe it's just that it's taken people by surprise, that there wasn't the good consultation in the early days. That it could have easily been a letterbox uh, drop, for example, put around the local people just saying, give us your thoughts on either yes or no. So it, literally it was put through as a fait accompli uh, that um, it was just automatically decided. So I think that was the main um, anger from a lot of the local people and then obviously as time goes on then they get emotionally sort of caught up and say is the scale wrong and that type of thing so there certainly has been a momentum against the sculpture going in. Either way retired police inspector Greg Gilpin who helped recover bodies of the dead from the mountain is disappointed at the neighbours reaction. This is New Zealand's largest disaster in terms of loss of life and, and there's still nothing no memorial to remember these people who died. It seems like it's a case of people not wanting it in their own backyard or whatever. It sounds rather selfish to me, but I know what they would say to me. If it was in your backyard, would you want it? And I, I would want it, I mean, because it would. I think it would be an honour to have it, to remember these people who died. So it's difficult to understand really. But Anne Coney and Joe Malcolm are still convinced that the Parnell Park is not the right place as it already has monuments commemorating the Korean War, Dutch soldiers and a plethora of remembrance benches. Ms Malcolm says she doesn't think the lives lost in Erebus are any more important than the memorials already in the park. How is this enhancing the site? How does this, how does this add any any value to the site. We would not see the sea. From here, we would simply have lost our view. The Waitamata local board will decide whether to say yes or no to the Erebus National Memorial at a meeting on December 3rd. For Checkpoint, call Susan Strongman a hoe.